This tutorial covers how to make sheet metal parts in NX. We're going to start with a 3D shape in, in this tutorial and actually turn it into a sheet metal part. Uh, so this could be something like a gas tank, a water tank, or any other object that you want to make out of sheet metal. Uh, so if we start with a solid like this, basically what we're going to do is instead of turn, keeping this as a solid object, we're going to turn each of these panels into a sheet metal panel that's able to be bent up into shape. And we're going to do some other operations like adding flanges and adding cutouts to it, like if we want to put rivets or some kind of another part that mates up with it. So I just drew this in modeling. Uh, I believe it's a 4 inch tall by 8 inch by 8 inch little rectangular block here. To sheet metal it, I'm going to go to File and then Sheet Metal. And since we're starting with a solid, I just want to do Sheet Metal from Solid. Uh, you get this dialog here. You need to set up a couple things before you start working. I'm going to uh, set the thickness to... Uh, so I went to use uh, local value there. Uh, that way I can edit it in this dialog. I'm going to change it to 32 thousandths, which is a standard sheet metal size. Uh, I'm going to set the bend radius to the same thing. This is dependent on whatever tools or techniques you're going to use to actually bend it. And then I can use round or square bend release. I'll just leave it on round. Uh, so now it wants me to select a web face. So what I'm going to do is uh, start with one of the panels and then select another panel and then I'm going to select the top panel and that's going to bend those all, all together just like that. Uh, I can keep this on the inside of what I've drawn or the outside. If I'm trying to make some kind of a tank at a certain volume, then I draw the shape at the volume that I was trying to make the tank and then I would offset to the outside. If I'm trying to keep it within a specific volume, then I'd, I'd offset it inside. Uh, so this is what I want. Uh, I need to get the rest of the panels. Uh, so what I'm going to do now, I'm going to select the side and you'll see it gives me a little alert down here. That's because this thing could be bent from three of these panels. So I need to tell it which ones it's bending from. So I'm going to go to select bend edge and let's bend it up from what would be the bottom panel here. And then we need to do the same thing on this side. We get the alert, bend it up from the bottom. And then finally we need to do this side and let's bend it up from the bottom as well. Hit OK. It's going to think about it a little while. And then we get a nice little sheet metal part here. So if I zoom in, you can see how it's got the, the bins here on the corners, uh, and I've got a nice little 32,000 sheet metal part from my initial block. If I was going to weld the corners of this thing, this would probably be okay, because I, I just cut this thing out, fold it up, and then just, just weld it along the seams. If that's not going to be enough, or if I want to try to do some kind of mechanical fastening, like use rivets, uh, I would have to put some little tabs on this thing. So I can do that. Uh, to do that, we're going to use the flange tool. So if I click flange, I need to select the edge that the flange comes off of. Uh, so let's pick, let me try to think what would be the best way to fold this thing up. Let's try coming from this side and see if that looks good. Uh, so I have it set to at end. Let's try full, and that gives me a full length tab. I'm going to do it the other way and that looks pretty good actually. So that's going to be a half inch long. Uh, I want it to be right on the outside of this material. So we're going to have to work on this a little bit I think. So bend radius, let's set that to 0.32 and then is it right there? Sorry, I'm going to have to rotate my view here a little bit. Yeah, that's pretty close to what, what I want. It's going to interfere here a little bit, so I, I could use a little bit bigger radius there if I needed to, but it should should be okay. All right, so that looks good. I uh, I can change where it's offsets, and obviously some of these things just, just wouldn't work at all. This one would if I wanted to offset into the inside of the material, if I wanted that tab basically to be, be hidden inside. Uh, that looks a little bit better than the tab outside, but of course the tab's easier to access if it's if it's been outside. You can do whichever is applicable for whatever you're designing. Uh, so that looks good. Uh, so let's let's do a few more of those. So I'm gonna just apply that, and then I'm gonna do the same thing over here, and my settings should be basically the same. So I need to flip that thing into place. That looks good. Let's apply that, and then let's keep going around with those. All right, that looks good. And then 
last one of these. That looks good. Okay, so now it's sealed up all around the sides. We need to get this top done. Uh, note that I've got a bend over here on this side, and I've got a bend down there, so I need to get these three th sides all, all sealed up. So to keep my tabs from interfering, let's bend up on this side. Ooh, it's not liking that, so that's not going to let me do it. So let's try bending down from this side. And note that when it folds down, it's going to interfere there. So I'm, I'm going to have to fix that by uh, basically shrinking this tab. I can do that. So under width option, I want to do at center. And then for the width of it, I don't know how it calculates that, but uh, I need it to be the correct value. So I'm going to go here to measure, and I'm going to do projected distance here. Because I want to along that axis, and I want to go from basically this tab over to the... Oops, I selected the wrong thing. That tab. And it's a little off still. Let me... I think it's off by... Actually, it's good there. Man, it's off by just a little bit. It looks like about 32,000. So let me take off... Let me... Oh, it's set to measure. Let me measure that one more time. So I've got the vector. I've got... I think it's this endpoint that might be messed up. Just got a little overlap there. I think it's just a... a it's off by the bend radius. So let me change that to formula. Actually, I need to change it to make constant, and then I can adjust it. So let's do 7 minus 0 0.032. All right, now, now, we're, now we're good. Okay, so now I want to come over here and repeat the process. I want to fold this down, and then I want to do 7 minus 0 0.032. All right. That looks good. And then lastly, I need this edge over here, which, just to make it all look nice and consistent, let's do a full width and see if we can get that one to work. Okay. And now, now we're all sealed up. So uh, I could basically unfold this thing, cut it out of a big piece of metal, fold it up, and I've got all these nice tabs here that I could use to rivet it together. So I'm going to go ahead and save my part here. Okay, so uh, what I want to do now is show some of the other features that you can do. Uh, I'm going to start with a normal cutout. This allows me to basically put holes in this thing, so if I wanted to put some kind of a filler neck in this thing, I could do it. I need to draw a sketch, so I'm going to put it on the top of this tank here, and I'm just going to draw a circular hole somewhere roughly in the center. I can adjust it the later and uh, hit escape to get rid of that dialog and now I can uh, adjust these things more precisely so let's just put it roughly four inches and then four inches and then let's change that to be a three inch diameter and I've got a sketch there I know it's a it's a little off just because uh, the way this is centered up I mean, it's centered this way it doesn't look quite centered that way. I just think that's, yeah, it's measuring from the origin of the coordinate system there, which is not exactly the origin of my original part. So I'd have to go back and adjust the original sketch to get the, the, those to sync right back up. So I'm going to go ahead and change it to three so it at least looks a little bit better. Well, it's not, not too much better. But anyway, you'd have to adjust that wherever you wanted it. It doesn't really matter in this case. So I'm just going to finish the sketch. And uh, this is where it's basically kind of like a, like an a cut or like an extrude operation. Uh, so you can do thickness, mid plane, and you can set different limits. Uh, I'm going to do, since it's only a, a, basically a 32nd of an inch, 0.2 is fine, and it basically cuts a hole through this thing. It doesn't cut it all the way through, otherwise, it'd have a leaky gas tank. Uh, so you can see that there's another object shown in there. That is actually this, this extrusion. So I can hide that 
and then you can just see the sheet metal part that we've got here. I want to go ahead and save it again. Okay, and so uh, now just showing some other operations. Let's say I want to do a bead, like a kind of rolled bead or a punched bead. I can do the same same basic setup as doing a normal cutout. I've got to start with a sketch. So let's do it on that same surface. And then I basically draw some kind of a profile. So let's start the center and then let's go four inches in the diameter and then that's just going to be the profile where that beads run so let's put it the other way so I'll just look that way and I could change the uh, depth radius all those other things and I get a nice little sheet metal bead in this thing so now I, I've got a, a tank sheet metal tabs I've got a bead I've got a normal cutout you can see some of the other options here like putting dimples louvers uh, drawn cutouts uh, punches, gussets, lots of different options here. It's really actually an incredibly powerful tool. Um, pattern feature too, if I want to do like rivet holes on these, I could do a normal cutout that goes through both panels and then do a pattern feature to put all the little holes that I would need to do to do rivets. You know, if I'm going to have this laser cut, I might as well have it cut all the holes for the rivets. That way it's nice nice and precise. If I was going to plasma cut it, I probably don't want to do that because it's going to make a mess of things. So it just depends on, on how you're going to manufacture this or what kind of post-processing you're going to do once it's done. Uh, but that shows most of the basic tools and how to just, just get this thing set up as a sheet metal part. Okay, now once that I've got my sheet metal part, I basically want to get this thing set up so I can manufacture it. Uh, so to basically unbend this thing and turn it back into a flat sheet, I can go up here to this button over here, which I think it defaults to flat solid. We want to do a flat pattern, and we want to just, just pick a face to unfold it from. So we can pick this top face here and click OK. And you can see just for a moment, you'll see the unfolded pattern. That's just basically it calculating the unfolding. To actually unfold it, we have to do another operation. But that was successful. Uh, NX is really picky about how it unfolds things, so uh, I've gotten several different errors on this and I don't have too many good solutions if you get an error at this point. Uh, generally it just goes, goes back to uh, these tabs and, and if they interfere with each other or if they're in a way that they'll, they won't unfold or they'll unfold and they hit another, pan, another tab, it'll, it'll give an error. So a lot of it just gets back to adjusting the length of these things, but this one unfolded nicely. So uh, to get the flat actual pattern that you use to make the part, go to flat solid, pick that same face, and it'll think, and then you get this, this part that's basically, and let me hide the sheet metal body, and you get this, this nice flat panel here that you could turn and uh, move into the drafting part of NX and get a, uh, get a nice drawing for to make it, or you could export it as a format like a DXF or a DWG, that's something you could go right right into a plasma cutter or a cam software to be to be manufactured. So as far as how, how to do that, NX makes it actually really, really nice. So uh, all I need to do is go up to the same button and go to export flat pattern. Uh, you need to pick a flat pattern feature and also where you want to put it. It defaults to the same folder that, we're, that uh, the part drawing's in. Uh, there's some uh, tolerances here for simplifying B splines. Uh, so most of uh, the NX or the, the DXF format and other formats, they basically break it down into a series of lines and arcs. So if you've got anything complicated like a spline, it's just going to turn it into a bunch of splines and arcs, which is not unusual whenever you get take something to manufacturing. Lots of other little buttons here that you can you can adjust things if it, the final drawing doesn't work out to your taste. Uh, I'm just going to select that flat pattern. I've got a DXF file. I'm going to click OK. It's going to turn on that a little bit. And uh, now, now that's been been exported. So uh, what I can do is actually go to the desktop, and let me just show you what that flat pattern looks like. So let's go to NX Tutorial 8, and let's just open that DXF file. Uh, it's going to take a little second to open AutoCAD here. 
uh, but you'll actually be able to see the flat pattern DXF file. And I know a lot of plasma cutting software takes DXF files in. Uh, you can import that and then it'll automatically make the tool pass for you. So I could go right to a plasma cutter or a laser cutter or a water jet, something like that, and have it cut out this pattern and then basically have, have my sheet metal part. All I've got to do is fold the thing up and either rivet it or weld it and it's going to be done. As far as the bead goes, it's going to show the bead in the drawing, but that would have to be a separate operation. You're either going to have to stamp that thing or or roll it to get that to get that feature in place. But as far as having the basic geometry that needs to be cut, especially things like rivet holes, then uh, it's really nice to be able to just model those into the sheet metal. So, this is opening up now, so you can see it, it actually did it in the I believe it's going to be in the XZ plane. So let me rotate this. Sorry, it's taking a little while to get AutoCAD loaded. All right, there we go. Uh, so I, I had to rotate it because of the coordinates that I used. So when I get it rotated correctly you can see the the flat pattern ready to go you can see the the bend reliefs in it basically that will be cut out that um, will make it easier to bend and then you can see the pattern where where the actual bead would go so that's the sheet metal tool in NX uh, you can see lots of the other operations here too uh, so if I want to make a more complicated flange there's a contour flange and then there's a, an advanced flange lots of other options here too. You can actually draw a sheet metal panel from scratch without having a solid. I find it's just a lot easier if you start start with a solid. Uh, you can do different things with uh, the corners and uh, then over here there's some, some more operations here for uh, for basically adding to it using going to do extrusions or use a hole making operation. This would work really well for, for doing the rivets. I'd probably do a hole instead of a normal cutout. I think it's the whole hole is a little bit better suited for that. And then you could do a pattern feature to to make an array of those. Uh, instead of doing the flat pattern on automatically, you could actually unbend these each bend one by one by one. It's a little little tricky doing that and having NX be happy, so don't really recommend that. Uh, the flat pattern work works works really well when it works. Okay, that's it for this tutorial. Thanks everyone.